Okay, get that in the back. All right. We're with Eric and Corey. Um, everybody remembers them from Oswaton and Kusin Price. Yes. All right. Before we start the interview, I'm going to tell you some funny story. Okay. I'm going to see if you remember this or not. Okay. I think it was in the late 90s. No, 90, when I was touring with you guys, Bob was around. Uh -huh. We're touring. It was in Bakersfield. Bakersfield, right? There was these two rockabilly guys. Like, it was New Year's Eve of yeah. 1998. El elbowing people, it goes really tough. They took the sh shirt off. I remember seeing it on. Holy shit. I'm in Los Angeles, man. <laughs> I think it's fireworks. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, I'm kidding. So they had tattoos on, and then uh, outside, they were picking on somebody. They were uh, hitting on yeah. somebody. Mm -hmm. Then you were going, fuck, no. You pulled out a bullet bill or something. Oh, or, yeah. Or a stud bill. You wrapped the slug. Yeah. You're hitting it. One of you guys had a base. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, there was a New Year's Eve show we played in Bakersfield. New Year's Eve, and you were on stage, it was midnight, we, I think we took the stage at midnight, or at least we were in the middle of our set at midnight, and you came up and, uh, you wanted to say some words, you know, wish right. everyone a happy New Year, and you were, you were always away with words, Jay, it was, it was pretty awesome, and, uh, as we stopped, there was those two skinheads in front of me, and I saw what they were doing, and we were, we exchanged some words, and then, guy said something about you know yeah. you, you, you want to go you want to go so I threw my 74 Rickenbacker down <laughs> literally threw it down like a like a hockey player I threw my stuff down and I went in after him and uh, I was on top of him and one of his friends was just about to kick me in the face and as soon as that was happening uh, the security guard came down with a, a can of mace and was like the size of a uh, fire hydrant and just maced everybody and the entire the entire room. crowd but I yeah. I was the one that got maced but it saved me from getting kicked kicked in the <laughs> face and they pushed everybody out and uh, I went around the back door and I saw Robert Collins running down the street from the front I was in the back of the building and he, he was, was in the front and I saw him running for he us. was roading yeah. for us and he was running down the street and I was like oh shit I gotta go with him so I get to the corner and as I'm getting to the corner uh, I see two guys with two guys going at it and it was one of the skinheads that I had a had a shoving match with and uh, I took my bullet belt off and I wrapped it around my fist and I ran for about a half a block and I just clocked him and he, he fell down he like the cartoons he went so one of you guys based on other skinhead or something. Then, we, just, I don't know. I don't. Dave, I don't. Dave, know. Dave, Dave, oh, did he? I I'm just that. mentioning this because it's just, it's just funny. These guys are tough with that ass. But no, there was we're another. Not. Time <laughs> no, we're not. No, you stood your ground. Stupid. You stood your ground. Yeah. yeah. There was another sure time in Portland. There was like hundreds of people. The Defiance was playing. There was a troublemaker. Nobody was doing anything. Yeah. So, like those hundreds of people. So you finally were on stage and say say something like it. Out here, Neil was grabbing you. Yeah, then yeah, you yeah. Jump off the stage, you grabbed him because nobody yeah. was doing anything. You kick, kicked him out. Yeah, threw I, took, him out. I took him to the front I'm, door. Well, yeah. The, 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 I, I mean, the thing I remember the most about that oh. Bakersfield incident was um, that was Portland, like, by the way. That now this last one, yeah. That that Bakersfield was a uh, New Year's, and I remember that fight eventually breaking out, and the security guard pepper spraying the crowd, and everyone going outside. You were ringing it. You were doing the countdown. You were on stage. Right. And you're doing the 10, 9, 8, as chaos and violence and melee and people fighting and being pepper sprayed. You were still up there trying to count down the new year. Right. You and you did. You got to number one and you went, Happy New Year, everyone, as people were fighting. Yeah, people were fighting. And it was around yeah. a movie. It just, <laughs> it, was, it just shows you the, that. The, that the right. juxtaposed the, like, the violence with you trying to do this positive, peaceful thing. It was, it, it, that was always branded in my mind from that night. All right, interview didn't even start it yet. I'm just bringing this up. It yeah. shows that they care about the audience. Well, yeah, honestly, I, I think like what it was is... We're uh, engaging with the audience. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we... Yeah. I mean, troublemakers. If there's troublemakers, they're gone. Well, I think, like, the first time and the first couple times we went to the West Coast, the tour, we had, you know, a reputation, and obviously people knew what we were taught. Our, our songs dealt with the political matters and stuff like that. So I think... Um, you know, it was the 90s, and a lot of people thought we were politically correct mm -hmm. words, I'm not going to say. And, you know, wanted to come and challenge us. Yeah. And thinking that we were going to be these peaceful little hippie PC 
yeah. that, you know, they thought we were. And they didn't realize this is where we come from. And, yeah. and he's <laughs> taller than you, even with your yeah. hair spike. And <laughs> you guys came from, like, tough neighbors. So. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're just average working class kids. Western, we're, we're quintessential uh -huh. Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania, blue collar, working class kids. Uh -huh. You know, my dad did climb telephone poles for a living. He was a lineman and stuff. Yeah. So people thought since we were anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic, we didn't eat meat and stuff like that, they thought we were these passive, push hippie, overs. Just push over. pushover little wimps, and they were going to come challenge us. You know, a lot of skinheads or, you know, idiot drunk punk kids or Gigi Allen and all that kind of shit. And little did they know is we weren't that. Yeah, we believed in all that stuff. You stood your ground. But we fucking yeah. stood our ground. Okay. You know, we weren't like these we little the college kids violence. or something yeah. like that. We were... I learned to fight by... We grew up around steel things. mills and shit, you know? Yeah. My dad was in the mill before he was in a war, before he was in... The, you know, we're very quintessential, stereotypical yes. fucking... Blue collar. Blue collar kids, yeah. you know? But that's... Rust Belt, yeah. Yeah, Rust that's... Belt. To sum up all those first... Two little stories. <laughs> All right, then now the interview is going to start. Now we're interviewing. Now okay. we're interviewing. That was okay. just a funny story. That was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can look back and laugh at that shit now. Yes. <laughs> at the time, we were like, what the f***? Yeah. <laughs> I know your secret plan tonight. You had enemies line plan. You're going to go up there and play a couple of the Ostrotten songs. Yes. Yeah. Ostrotten is way big now compared to the... the not, when we were in actual band. When you guys yeah, were like, we're I'm talking about band. way, way, yeah. way, way yeah. big. Okay. Yeah, I've never expected Why? that. Well, we, were, we started <laughs> off with a pen pal of yours. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Pen pal. We'll get to that. Yeah, okay. But, okay, okay. since since out of your secret plan, you guys are doing us rotten after Behind Enemy Line. Yeah. Yes. What? A lot of kids have been had a chance, like this generation, mm -hmm. about, didn't have a chance to see us rotten. Mm -hmm. How come uh, us rotten doesn't play? I mean, a lot we, of we want to know. We broke up. Right. Um, to be totally honest, we all kind of went separate ways to an extent. Uh, we were doing different bands. We had personal issues with each other I'm not going to get into. Yeah, so we, we, we all and grew up with each other. Like me, Eric, and Dave grew up uh, yeah. within a, a half a mile. Dave was my childhood neighbor yeah. growing up. I've known Dave since I've been four. I've known Eric since I've been seven. We were on the same baseball team. and uh, it, it, it just runs deep with us. We have a yeah. very long history of friendship and emotion. We're like brothers. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. brothers fight and don't get along yeah. and stuff like that but um right. yeah. we, so, we've since overcome a lot and we're getting along great and yeah. i've been um, seeing a picture of all, all of you guys the, the, that lineup photo together too yeah with, with the yeah drummer. we hang out here with and the, there with, the oh, Matt, Matt, with richard Matt. muscular oh with Matt, with yeah, Matt, yeah, with yeah, Matt. Yeah. i thought yeah there's another picture with um Matt, our old awesome. drummer richie that was on yeah. like the first couple seven inches in the first album so, so I thought we all get together cool. here and there and hang out we're, we're cool you know and um the reason why we're doing this is kind of like what goes back to the, the original stories you were telling is we have these beliefs, these strong right. core beliefs. And regardless of whatever happened to us personally, we still shared those lyrics and those beliefs and those songs. And, and we're still fighting to this day, literally, literally. at times, um, you know, defending shit we wrote 25 years ago that um, I'm not gonna be ignorant and think that that shit ever went away. And that shit being, you know, fascism and white racism and white supremacy and proud boys and Nazis and all this, whatever you want to fucking call them now. But, right. And basically, it's been getting real nasty. I don't have to tell you or anybody watching this that shit is getting really fucking nasty again. And I know it's not just because of Donald Trump, but it kind of coincidentally came along when he uh, came along. And some stuff has been happening here in this city. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the um, shooting that happened at the Jewish synagogue here a few months ago, which um, was right in our own fucking backyard. I live a couple miles from that, that building. And um, we all know people affected by that. We have friend, a good friend of ours, his father was one of the victims that survived, thankfully, but he was actually shot. And um, that, there, it was the biggest attack on Jewish people in this country ever, and it happened in our own backyard. And there was some other stuff I'm not going to get into that has been happening around here. Because of that, the more people in the community came together? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I attended like, a march. Stronger. What happened in Squirrel Hill, which is the, the Jewish neighborhood of Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. And uh, shortly after that, they had a march, like a peaceful march, just people supporting um, solidarity and such. And I went and attended it, and uh, I had to fight back the tears, I'm not going to lie. It was, it, was, it was a very tough, emotional um, thing. You know, they, they walked by the first responders. 
and you know the firemen and stuff and everyone stopped and applauded them P applauded the police i kind of just kept my opinions to myself <laughs> but, uh, but i shouldn't laugh at all but uh anyways a lot of shit has been going on and long story short is you know we spoke the three of us dave Corey, and myself spoke and said hey uh Skullfest is right around the corner we need to we're obligated. We felt I felt like we were obligated to do something or say something and about what the fuck is going on. And I just asked Dave, I was like, can we get on stage with you and sing, perform the song, Fuck Nazi Sing? That's the most relevant right and, now. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's Unfortunately, it is. Yeah. It really is. A lot of our songs are still relevant. But, and he agreed. And it didn't take any thought. He's like, no, no, we have to. We, we have to do this. And um, oh, something that really, um, going back to that march I did, in Squirrel Hill, something that really solidified it for me was um, <clears throat> the, the march came up to a, 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 an intersection uh, right down the street from the synagogue where the attack happened, right? Donald Trump was in town and his motorcade came. He had the fucking audacity to fucking go to the synagogue, right? And as our march came, the people leading the march starts turned around and were saying, turn your backs to the motorcade, turn your back. He's driving by, so we all turned our backs, basically really? fuck you to him, right? As he drove by, he later denied that in interviews. Yeah. Like, right, and that didn't happen. He said he there didn't. was no counter protest, yeah. there was no march. Yeah. Um, before I turned my back, I look across the street uh -huh. and there's a guy, a young man, with a big fucking sign, white sign, black letters, fuck, Nazi, sympathy. He's not a punk, really? he's not a punk, he's not a metalhead, he's not alternative looking, he's, he's a dude. He's like a college guy, right? He's standing there, he did not turn his back. He stood and held that sign, fucking boom, to the motorcade. I saw that and I, 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 I blew my, I wrote, I, I wrote those fucking lyrics, yeah. that song 25 years ago. And here it is, it left punk rock and, and, and went into something different. Something that wasn't a punk kid that, like, doing that. He probably never listened to our band. Yeah. I could have walked up to him. He wouldn't have known who I was. People that, that, people that, that hit me punk, hard. That, that people that weren't yeah. punk is something that they're, they're able to identify with. You know? and, yeah. um, it left, it just, transcends punk. It left punk. And it, it's become like a battle cry, for lack of a better term, that you see used now. It's up there with Nazi punks fuck off and no word, no gay gay gay, no fascists. You got her face on I'm sorry. Okay. I'm talking to you. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> You're move, doing. Moving around. Oh, there you go. He's, <laughs> he's experienced. Have, he's an artist. I have a question. Since we're talking about the early days, okay? Yeah. Was Os Rostin the very first punk band to do the Mumia thing? You guys did, came with the Mumia Flexi disc. He, yeah. that was, was that before maybe, Madness? Maybe was Madness a bastard first? I'm not sure. Guys, I don't know. You guys? I can't remember. I honestly don't know. Remember. I, I can't imagine we were the first people to address we, that. No, we were. I'm not sure. Because Manny the Bastard did a split, then uh -huh. Oswald did came with the free flex of right. yeah. Mumia, which you Well, that, I'll, I'll tell you what, that was in the, I'll tell you yeah. what, that was in the System Works for Them album that came out yeah, that in 1995, okay. if that helps. That I'm not sure when the Man is the Bastard record came out, if it was before that or not. And then, I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. then you guys got reviewed in the Black Panther newspaper. Yeah. I mailed it to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, newspaper, yeah. they reviewed your album. Yeah. Which is crazy. Reviewing Os Rock and the punk rock band. Yeah. Yeah. And then it blew me up. That was that may have been a first. Like, yeah, <laughs> that may have yeah, been a first. Yeah. Well, you yeah. took us first, first, first punk rock band. Yeah, reviewed in the Black Panther newspaper. Yeah, you took us to the Black Panther headquarters, which was called the New Vanguard at that point. Yeah, that, New Panther that, Vanguard. Yes, and uh, I just remember. Uh, and after that, like, we went to the Gang Truth office. Yeah, and, and you and you took us on. I mean, that was that, Neil, that was an experience. Neil, that was an experience. And, and everybody. And so, That's something I'm so glad you took us. Yeah, so glad you. That was interesting. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yep. Okay, now, all, during that huge break, what, what did you guys do when all SWAT did this? Well, we did Caustic Christ. Before I did a band called Caustic Christ, Dave uh -huh. and Matt, who's the final drummer of Os Rotten, uh, behind me lines, we shared Bill Chamberlain on guitar, uh -huh. the two bands, and um, musically, that's about all I did that yeah. anyone would uh -huh. remember or care to hear about yeah you know. and then i also remember before you guys broke up you guys went to europe japan mm -hmm. it, it, all over the no, wait, states philippine got canceled yeah. yeah but you went to all over the state what was yeah. it like traveling it was it 
purpose? You guys went well, all over the world. Yeah. Stuff. Well, it was before it was really easy to do. Um, it, it was amazing the amount of work that went behind booking a tour over there. There was there weren't a lot of bands, American bands touring Europe at that point. I mean, yeah. there were, but not not at the level that we were. Was doing this before it at. the internet? Oh, this yeah. is well before the internet. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was all so you guys phone. Were it, it's high, it was like phone? expensive phone bills, <laughs> writing yeah. everything, writing everything yeah. down, and uh, it, uh, I don't know. I think Europe really changed this. We actually we, our first tour over there, we did five or six weeks, and it, it, cameraman it, with us. Cameraman went with us, and it was like it, Picasso's it, a cameraman. Oh, but uh, it, it ended up being it ended up Picasso proving to be a little bit tour. like uh -huh. we were all pretty young then. I was twenty. And it was like my first time in Europe, and you know, I've never I, been on an airplane. The first time I've ever even yeah. was ever flown in an airplane was an Osron. Tour. Yeah. So it opened up a whole, oh, yeah. literally, no pun intended, opened up a whole fucking world to me. Basically, yeah. you know, I mean, I guess I grew up a poor working class kid. The fuck was I flying? Yeah. Dude, people wanted we to were, you know, we weren't wanted. jet setting to the freaking yeah. ski resort <laughs> with mom and dad. That yeah, shit wasn't people happening. Wanted us, people First time to get a passport a, or be on a plane uh, was band related. I was just kind of taken back by like, wow, people want us to come all the way over there to watch us do our thing. You know, and, it was cool. Uh, it was really cool. It was like for for a twenty three year old, twenty two, twenty three year old kid, man. It, it was it was life changing for me. And, uh, we weren't going to all the regular touristy places. I I, I was you know. I wound up hell behind behind uh, behind the Kofi squad, and I was given uh, the people that lived there gave me a tour of like the wall, you know, the Berlin Wall and, and, uh -huh. and such, and uh, taking me and taking me and showing me where these cars were parked along the river and along the wall. If you opened up the hood of them, there was steps going down, and it was people living in these tunnels under the wall and beneath the river, and they were living in old tunnels that people were trying to dig out in order to get out of out of Berlin, East, yeah, yeah, get out of West, East Berlin yeah. and over to the West and stuff. And that yeah. was like, stuff like that wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, we went to the nice museum and just took in the, <laughs> took in the local, local flavor. <laughs> and it was like, no, I was doing tours like, like that. But I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that's the kind of stuff we saw. Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to see going yeah. over there. Yeah. You know, I wanted to see history. And yeah, and East Berlin was like still, that. was still pretty much in ruin at that point. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was only First time we went was maybe six years after the wall came down, and then so things didn't really change overnight there. You know yeah. What I mean? and yeah, it, yeah. Eastern Europe was, or Eastern <coughs> Berlin was still in ruin, and uh, it was a sight to see. Yeah. You know, it was, wow, that's cool. What about Asia? Were you in culture shock when you went to Japan and stuff? Uh, was different culture. Yeah, I guess yeah, not being able to read anything kind of. Did you, kinda, yeah. kinda did you run into Battle of Disarm or any of those? Um, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, we, did. yeah, we, did. yeah we, we played with some cool bands and met some. We some played bands. with Battle of Disarm. Yeah, we did. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, oh, yeah, 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 we did. Yeah. Yeah. I have photos of that. They were dressed in the, in the gauze, you know, the band gauze. Yes, and like yes. how they wear like those their jumpsuits, those green kind of, I don't know, pilot jumpsuits. They were wearing that. I don't know if it was ripping off gauze or in tribute to gauze or something. I remember that. Yeah. So, is there any like differences how they treat the band in like Europe and here, America? At the time, yeah. yeah the time, I mean, yeah. In, in Europe, uh -huh. it was the squat scene, and you were staying in these squats that were also people's homes, and they lived there and they cooked there and all that. And um, they, they took care own, of bands. They had their own bars. Yeah, yeah. You know, their own sleeping quarters. And they just, made food you know, for you. A total like, like a communal living. Stay. Right. You know, right. You know, it's like that was another thing that we a bunch of a bunch of kids from the Rust Belt and stuff is you know experience communal living mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But it wasn't like pretentious or rock star or anything like that. It was just community. It was just yeah. people looking out for you and, and being hospitable. And yeah. Such. And you had that to a degree at the time in, in touring America, but a lot of times you didn't. You know, people might cook you something here and there, but a lot of times, and I think it's just an American thing. Like it's, I'm not rat, I'm not ripping on American punks or people at all, but I think it's just a cultural thing. And America is more like, oh yeah, here uh, there's a restaurant on the street. Yeah. Right. You know. And then you guys do something really important that does not happen anymore. I mean, how does it? It was like a, a primate freedom tour, it was like an mm -hmm. anti vivisection animal yeah. rights tour with all yeah. the punk bands with anti product, poet named Mark, and then what? Was Sarah there, Loy a, a, yeah, Sarah from AK, a, no, Sarah, and also um, Car Car Carolyn from AK Pressbooks. Yeah, Fly, Yeah, Fly and you guys were just yeah. going on all 
all these places playing all this. They toured around the entire country, if yeah. I remember correctly, and then we did like they a were segment. Visiting sites. They were visiting sites like yeah. institutions that were practicing. Right. After that, on, on yeah. I didn't see any punk bands doing that stuff. That was really no, cool. that was that, that was, was a tough one. That, <laughs> that was, was a tough one. That was a tough one. Because it was a benefit tour, and yeah, everything was on. This and we were, you know, we don't need a lot of money to survive or, yeah. or keep a tour going, but you do, you know. Yeah, and, right, right. and we were living off of our own um, merchandise sales, T-shirts and stuff. Yeah. And um, I thought it was really great. It was definitely tough. It was something. Uh, it was something we all believed in, and but it was yeah. like, but once but we it wasn't got anything. out there, we realized how tough it was. Yeah, it was kind of a, a test. You know, like, okay, let's that see if this can really happen. Awesome yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we just said fuck it and did oh, it. Oh, and the LA one with anti, anti I think it was with anti product. I think it was the second one. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But then there was all. Mike, he passed away a long time ago. Michael Zins, who was in the original path, that he came and spoke. Oh. I think it was at the LA show. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes it was. Yes, yes it was. Yes, it was. Yes, and it he, was. he I was, remember that. He was cussing so much, all the crowds would go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a good word. I remember that. Like, it's a good word. It's yeah. Maybe resident paradise. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's a word that resonates with people. Long time ago. Yeah, you're going to remember that when people were using words like that. I remember that. And then we, you guys play in the back, my backyard. I was living in a co-op house back then with anti product. Yeah. And like the, um, it was a backyard. Yeah. And the landlord came. Yeah. And I don't drink or anything. Is that yeah. of the Black Star collection? Yes, 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 yes. Black okay. Star. Yeah, yeah. And I got on the mic, hey, the landlord's here. Somebody give him a beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't even break it out. He was just watching. He was yeah, tripping out. I remember that. Somebody yeah. could neighbor yeah. called him, but he didn't break it out. He was just watching. Yeah, yeah. Tripping out. That was it. Yeah, that yeah. was. That was yeah. Well, he gave him a beer, so he was like, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it now. It can't be that bad. Yeah. Let's talk about the scene now. This is a long mm -hmm. time ago. Mm -hmm. How are things now? The punk rock movement and everything. We're Different, but same. Uh -huh. um, better, I think, in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, worse, worse in a lot of ways. Music, did, well, you, okay, a lot of good music. Yeah, music. Do they treat the bands music. better now? Like you guys? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Go ask the bands tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I don't play anymore. I, I <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I thought you've been playing with Acoustic Christ. You know, Costa Christ broke up. Jeez, oh, you, years yeah, ago. We've done a couple reunions for yeah. Skullfest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We. Wow. I learned See. a long time ago. Never quit your day job. So it was like doing music was just something more of a hobby. But I still like. I'm still a part of the the music. Yeah, the music, music scene. scene and would you say that anymore. since you guys were in a band for a long time, you missed out on a lot of like career opportunities or like to get jobs? You have to yeah, a cool job you yeah, find yeah, and you gotta yeah, quit. Yeah, I was in, tour, I, you know, find oh, a cool we were, job. When quit, Rod, we've we've lost friends, friends. Yeah. we lost each other, we lost houses, we lost jobs, um, yeah. love lovers, oh, friends, yeah. every, you know. Yeah. I slept in my van for a while until they took me into their house yeah. once but, I made it shit. Yeah. It wasn't glamorous at all, you know, yeah, but, but yeah. we all looked out but for yeah, each other. Like the sacrifices you made. You usually got like, shitty jobs that you weren't all that attached to anyway. Yeah. How do you, you do? Feel you might when you lose see it. people and that kids that were lost watching time too, the logo Hey, it's your body. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna pay too much for that. Yeah, it, it doesn't touch your heart or anything. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, it is, oh my god. It does. Yeah. I struggle for this man. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's like. You put a lot of hard work into it. I'll see people like the Oss Rotten. Logo tattooed or even painted on a jack or something like that. Or even up with like the the crass and the conflict right, right. or the black flag bars. All these uh, DK Dead Kennedys, all these other iconic bands. And I'm like, we're not in that league, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, and, but that. to this person or to maybe a lot of people, we are. And that really blows my mind. I'm like, you are. We're just like, <laughs> I've got both. So. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. we're just like the guys. From Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's like okay. we were talking about it the other night as young people. We start really off, cool. we start off in the back room when we first go to our first punk right. shows and whatnot. Then like, yeah. as you get older, you move up further and you stand up front, you know. And, and you're like, on now stage. We're, and now you're we're the old guys that stand in the back. Yeah, yeah I go to a punk know. show. I'm in the back room, just like <laughs> so, hi. I'm know, like the 14 year old. Don't again. know anybody. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I don't, it's cool. I don't like, stand on the back. It's cool. You don't you stand don't? in the back? I'm on the side of the stage taking photos. I don't, <laughs> oh, there you go. I, 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 I don't want to get hurt. I don't, I I don't want to get hurt. Yeah, I just hey. don't want to get hurt. Also, um, I was talking to him. I interviewed Rob and Paul Whitney a couple months ago. In the interview, he named oh, yeah. Oz Watson. He was saying that Oz Watson is not a crust band. People miss it for crust band. Like an apple punk band. So, like, yeah. every time yeah. I lie, it's just, I saw it say crust band, crust band. What? How come they put you in that category? I think anyone who was a little heavier, faster, maybe had political lyrics, dressed in black, like right. Discharge, or something they, at one time, maybe, or you guys were heavier live, though. Like, yeah. yeah. We got lumped into crust, right? I mean, crass was called crust. 
right. and yeah. stuff, you know, and um, it never bothered me, but I never thought we were a crust band. Yeah, maybe because, like, when we started in the early 90s, like, the, like, in New York City, there was, like, a lot of, like, really good crust bands going on at the time. It was, like, the end of nausea, and it was, like, the beginning of, uh, you know, Jesus Crust and the Denied, and there was, like, all these, like, really cool, like, My crusty, pal, crusty. Right? Yeah, yeah, Ralph, yeah, yeah, it's, like, these old, you know, like, crusty bands that were, like, punk, but they were hardcore, they were a little bit of everything. Um, I, maybe we were kind of of that. We played, some, with, we played with some of those, of those but by the, time we were, by the time yeah. we were ceasing to be a band anymore, uh, we were playing with a lot of power violence bands. Because that was oh, we ever got called power violence? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, we, we never got we're called fast power enough. Violence. Yeah, I remember playing the West Coast and we were playing with like News Crush. And, I just think know, that people always have to label Human everything. From Montreal. And then not only just label it as punk or hardcore, they have to find like a little subgenre. Well, they're anarcho, crust, grind, punk, boy. Oh, man, just it's punk. <laughs> you know, come on. But, uh, I always we thought ripping, we were... We were ripping everything off. We ripped everything yeah, off. I just always thought we were a hardcore punk band or an anarcho-punk band or, you know, political hardcore punk band. If we got called Crust or something, fine. It didn't bother me, but it did kind of like... That coming from yeah. it didn't make me wonder sometimes, but it wasn't a bad thing. But it was yeah, just well, like yeah. a whatever you got to call us, call, yeah, call it something, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Okay, that was 2019. I want to know what you guys do for how do you survive because I saw some. All I'm charging a hundred dollars for this interview. All these, metal, <laughs> all, these, all these metal things you've been doing. I take credit yeah. cards, I have one of those things on my phone. I do, uh, I do ornamental metal iron work. I've been uh -huh. doing it since 2001. I started off, uh, it's where I live at, uh, the house that, uh -huh. I want to say, been to? I don't know, it was, uh, it's, it was actually the Os Rotten house. It was, uh -huh. it was called Posh Punk. Um, I still work there. I lived there for 16 years from the time I was in the band. And, you know, I lived there, what, from 94 to, I'm terrible at math, but I lived there for 16 years, but I still work there. I've been of, the, of that property for 20 some years. So now. you have your own business? Yeah, I work. Yeah, it was oh, me and wow. another guy. Cool. It's uh, the guy that I started working with. It's just me and him. Uh -huh. And I've learned every time. Never went to trade school or anything. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's like, it, you know, like my family and stuff like that. My dad worked in machine shops his whole life. And, uh, you know, I think I was supposed to be part of part of his the family business. My dad owned a machine shop. And it was like, I saw what the business did to him. And I was like, no way in hell I want to do that. And it was, I don't know. But I, I still work with metal, so it's like, so it's, it's keeping up with family tradition, I guess. And uh, yeah, I dig it. You know, it's. Uh, I'm yeah. a professional driver. I drive all around the country. Oh, really? The Mid Atlantic, East Coast. Um, drive a, a huge van, and I. It's a weird job. I basically work for an architectural firm that is based out of Pittsburgh. It's an old friend of ours. We went to high school with an old punk guy who uh, started this business and he does he has a lot of clients in other cities around the side of the country and I basically like I'm the, the tour manager for like you know I take his employees and get them to job sites to check on you know buildings they're working on or wherever it may be and um, get them fed get them to their hotel rooms and stuff like that cool. and yeah so yeah, I'm you, you said on the road earlier all the time. about like like when we were younger. So I'm still touring, but it's it's a lot about like now. we we missed out on <laughs> career opportunities and yes, stuff. Yes, uh, yes, so yes. so oh, I was 22 when I was doing most of my touring. Yeah, yeah, I was going yeah. I was going to the University of Pittsburgh, and uh, you know I was in I was in there for a year. I did community college earlier. Then I uh, I was at the University of Pittsburgh, and that's when Osrod started doing a lot of touring. And uh, I just decided like this academia shit isn't for me, you know. And I, I never knew what I wanted to do, but I always knew what I didn't want to do. And um, and yeah, we did. Um, I every decision I made from the time I was 17 until the time I was like 30, in my mid 30s, was based on music, solely on music, you know. And, Funny uh, story is when he graduated from high school, Osrod, an early lineup of Osrod, and this maybe before Day was in, before Day was in the band. We went to his gradua graduation ceremony, and he had the cap and gown and everything, and, you know, goes up, Corey Lyons, gets his diploma, and it was like an 80s movie. He went running with a friend of his, a woman who played drums in another punk rock band here. Who had a crush on all the high school. Yeah. <laughs> and they both got there, they graduated school together, got their diplomas, went running together, threw off their hats and gowns, and we sat outside. We didn't throw them off. I just came running out like, holy shit. <laughs> with the van filled with equipment. To go out of town to play a show, and he hopped in. Yeah, they opened up the door. sliding doors like the end of the and movie. And that was and, yeah. that was his life from then yeah. on. Yeah, and it was like yeah. every it was like 
Yeah. <laughs> so we ruined him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Tonight, when you go on, can you uh -huh. 100%? It go fucking crazy. Oh yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to do it without hurting hey, myself. Hey, I found yeah. the Phil tattoo. Do you know that they're they're back together? Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Different singer. Just letting. Yeah, yeah. Go. Isn't it his son? I, his, no, uh, no, I don't know. I don't uh -oh. know. But they're, they're they're playing shows. They yeah. play like a show in Canada and everything. Like I heard him play more. Yeah. And all, that. all right, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna see behind the line and right after behind the line, yeah. they're gonna go on and they're gonna play Oswald songs. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna turn the camera off. So cool. it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Bye. Yes. <laughs> <Nice seeing you. laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah.